In a shocking turn of events, a tragic incident occurred in Simsbury, Connecticut, where Ding Sheng Lin stands accused of the murder of his wife, Chu Rongfang, inside their home. The events unfolded on a Friday morning, ultimately leading to Lin's arraignment in Hartford Superior Court on a murder charge, with his bond set at $2.5 million. The disturbing sequence of events began with an argument and screams for help heard by the couple's 18-year-old child, prompting them to call 911. The child reported waking up to the sounds of the altercation in an upstairs bedroom and hearing the victim, Chu Rongfang, screaming for help. The child's attempt to intervene by yelling upstairs in Chinese went unanswered, leading to a decision not to go upstairs out of fear. Upon police arrival, Lin was found was covered in blood, disobeying orders and was discovered on top of the victim, who had sustained fatal stab wounds to the throat. The responding officers performed life-saving measures, but Rong Fong was pronounced dead at the hospital. The disturbing nature of these events, as described in the document, underscores the tragic and violent nature of the incident, leading to the subsequent legal proceedings and the charges brought against Ding Sheng Lin. Lin's defense and subsequent legal proceedings. The defense, led by attorney Louis Klein, presented several arguments on behalf of Ding Sheng Lin, who is accused of murdering his wife. Firstly, Klein suggested that there might have been a misunderstanding due to a language barrier, implying that Lin may not have comprehended the police officer's commands during the arrest. This argument aims to mitigate the perception of Lin's non-compliance with law enforcement as intentional defiance. Secondly, Klein pointed out that Lin was found on top of the victim, but this could have been an attempt to render first aid, rather than an act of aggression or an attempt to harm her further. This argument seeks to challenge the interpretation of the circumstances under which Lin was found with the victim. Furthermore, Klein highlighted Lin's history of psychiatric issues, suggesting that his mental health could have played a role in the incident. The defense requested an evaluation to determine Lin's competency to stand trial indicating that Lin's mental state might affect his understanding of the legal proceedings and his ability to participate in his defense. Lastly, in response to concerns about Lin's ties to Connecticut and the risk of him not appearing for court due to his primary residence being in Florida, Klein argued that Lin has significant connections to Simsbury, Connecticut. He noted that Lin has lived in Simsbury for six years, owns a home there, and has taken the case seriously by hiring private counsel. This argument is intended to assure the court of Lin's commitment to facing the charges and participating in the legal process. Overall, the defense's arguments aim to present Lin in a more sympathetic light, suggesting that factors such as a language barrier, attempts to help the victim, mental health issues, and strong local ties could influence the court's perception of his actions and his reliability as a defendant. The prosecution in Ding Sheng Lin's case raised several counter-arguments to the defense's claims focusing on the severity of the incident and the need for a higher bond to ensure Lin's appearance in court. Firstly, the prosecution pointed out Lin's disobedience during the arrest as a significant factor. Despite the defense's suggestion of a possible language barrier or misunderstanding, the prosecution emphasized that Lin disregarded police commands, which led to him running into a bedroom and shutting the door before officers found him on top of the victim. This behavior was used to argue for the seriousness of Lin's actions and his potential risk to public safety. Secondly, regarding the defense's claim that Lin might have been trying to render first aid to the victim, the prosecution likely relied on the evidence at the scene, including the nature of the victim's injuries and the circumstances under which Lin was found, to argue against this interpretation. The fact that Lin was found on top of the victim with stab wounds to the throat could be seen as indicative of a violent attack rather than an attempt to help. The state also addressed the issue of Lin's residency and potential flight risk. The defense argued that Lin has strong ties to Simsbury, Connecticut, but the prosecution countered this by highlighting that Lin primarily lives in Florida. This was used to argue that Lin poses a flight risk, which justifies the need for a higher bond. The prosecution's concern was that Lin's out-of-state residence could affect his willingness or ability to appear in court, thereby necessitating a bond increase to ensure his presence at future legal proceedings. In summary, the prosecution's counter-arguments focused on emphasizing the gravity of Lin's alleged actions, disputing the defense's interpretations of those actions, and highlighting Lin's potential flight risk due to his primary residence being outside of Connecticut. 
These points were aimed at securing a higher bond to mitigate the risk of Lin not facing the charges against him. 